Hello there and welcome back to a very expensive episode of Pimp My Filter. Firstly, a big thanks to Mick who brought this down. And this magnificent creation is the F-Zone 22 litre stainless steel filter. It's an absolute beast. Although there is a couple of little issues with it, which could be improved. Now, although the manufacturer says that this filter is suitable for tanks up to 600 litres, that is the most low-balled figure I have ever heard when you take the actual size of the filter into consideration. So, basically what we have here is a stainless steel tube with the top on, with a big rubber seal, very, very similar to the ADA or ADA filters but it's a hell of a lot cheaper. I'll put the link to it in the video description. I think Mick got this for around about 400 English pounds delivered from the USA. And that included a big pump as well, which I personally think is a little bit too big. It's not often you hear me say that. That's a 6,000 litre an hour pump, 22 litre stainless steel filter, delivered with all the stuff and pipes and all that sort of thing delivered to the UK for around about 400 pounds is absolutely magnificent and if you can hear chainsaws and trees falling down I do apologize on the other side of the valley there's a lot of work going on <laughs> they're going berserk now as far as the import duties go he did say that he paid import duty I think on the pump but not on the filter, which is very strange. Maybe because of what it's made from, it could have been classed as something industrial, I don't know. But that, including the import duties, it was about 400 quid or thereabouts delivered, which is, as I say, magnificent. This 6,000 litre an hour pump, which sits on there with a bit of a, like a, a plate thing that goes on there, which also comes with this setup, um, 6,000 litres an hour is roughly 1,578 US gallons per hour. That is too much, I think. But the pump does also come with a control panel and it's got three different modes of operation. One is continuous use at full power. The second is a pulse sort of a setup whereby it goes hard and then it slackens off and goes hard. It's like a wave sort of a, an effect. And for, really for the price of the pump, I can't believe it's got so many features and so many bits and fittings and all that that comes with it. It's, it seems suspiciously cheap. And this seems suspiciously cheap for what it is as well. Ah yeah, and the last mode of this pump is called feed so if you're at your tank you're just about to feed your fish you press feed on the control panel pump knocks off for 10 to 15 minutes and then after that time it comes back on that gives your fish chance to eat everything before it gets sucked back out into the filter that's a really really nice feature now this filter comes with nothing in it apart from a couple of dividers and I have actually set it up prior to making this video. So I think we'll do this one in reverse. I'll show you how I've got it set up and then I'll show you how it comes and explain what the two issues are inside of here which can be easily rectified. So let's bring the camera in. Okay, so here is our monster filter. It is 22 litres capacity or 5.8 US gallons capacity. And if you notice, it's got two intakes on the bottom there, so you can draw from two different places in your tank, which is a lovely feature. They're welded on, everything else is welded on. These, instead of being bolted on like the Ada, are welded on. And those welds are not going to come off. This is bloody good quality stainless steel. Then you've got a top, which is very much like the Ada filter. You've got your outlet from the filter which feeds into the pump and then back into your tank and see that's pretty big diameter I think it is well apparently at least 
three quarters of an inch, but that looks nearer an inch to me. Although that's about three quarters of an inch. Then you've got a stainless steel plate, which sits on top of all your filter media. And in here, I've managed to fit a total of eight kilos of different types of filter media. So we've got bags of the Biohome Ultimate. Each one of these bags is 500 grams or roughly a pound. And then going down the center, we've got two bags of the Bio Gravel, which is a very porous man-made gravel made from the same stuff as the Bio Home. And each one of these is a kilo or 2.2 pounds. Now a lot of people might be familiar with something called biosensus or BCB or anoxic filtration. You, what you would do, you would normally put like cat litter, you know, gravel, that sort of thing, into a mesh bag to create slow flow zones and that's the rationale behind using them down the center of here. The core of this filter will be a very slow flow zone. And what that means is all the media inside of here will be capable of supporting anaerobic activity. Plus, the media that we've used in this case is exceptionally porous. So not only do you get the anaerobic bacteria on the outside in the anaerobic water inside of here, you also get it on the inside of the filter media as well. So, and what that does, it makes this anoxic bag of stuff exceptionally effective. Way more effective than using pumice or cat litter or any of that sort of stuff, which is nowhere near as porous. So if you really want to supercharge a big filter and get as much anaerobic activity as possible, that's the way to go. You can also use these in sumps and all that as well, you know. So I'll empty all this out and put it on the table so you can see exactly how much fits in the filter. And basically what I've done, I've just put the 500 gram mesh bags around the outside and then in the center we've got the one kilo bags of the bio gravel fits in there absolutely perfectly right i'll just pan down to show you what we've got so we've got 12 bags of 500 grams of bio home ultimate and then we've got two bags of one kilo bio gravel in total eight kilos and if we didn't bother going with a thick pad in there, we could probably get maybe another four of those 500 gram bags in there, which would take the total media in here up to about 10 kilos. Bear in mind the filter works from the bottom up, so obviously this is kind of in reverse, it's going down here. But we've got fine pad on the top, followed by a medium pad with the bumpy bits facing down for maximum surface area. Well, you can't really see in the bottom there, it's a bit dark. Oh, there we go. Followed by two coarse pads. And I'm using two coarse pads because I don't want this thing to clog up very quickly. So by going with two coarse, we should be able to extend it a little bit. You know, the heavy crap will take a long time to, to block that up. Then we're into the medium, then we're into the fine, which to be honest, we may not even need. Then in the bottom of here, we've got a bit of folded stainless steel with holes in just so we can maintain some sort of cavity underneath the media to allow the water to come in through the inlets and then up through the media. And this is where we've got our first potential problem. See, we've got the legs there, which is basically the plate steel bent down. We've got the inlets down the bottom there. And if we have that leg in the wrong place, i.e. right in front of one of the intakes, that will effectively block off one of your intakes. So you've got to be careful to have it like that, where we've got a leg and a leg, two intakes. So the intakes are feeding underneath this plate and not against one of these legs. And the second point of possible problem is the top plate which sits on top of the filter media again that can be placed so that your, your outlet from your filter which is there can sit 
on top of the plate if the filter is really full and the plate's right up to the top and effectively block the outlet from your filter. So what Mick's done, he's drilled a series of holes, which apparently was a hell of a job drilling through this stainless steel, and he's put bolts and nuts to create a one inch cavity between the plate and the top of the filter. And that just ensures that the plate can't possibly block that outlet. Now, as I said, it was a hell of a job, apparently, to drill these holes because this steel is exceptionally hard. So what I would suggest is just getting a bit of tubing, putting it in here and using zip ties or cable ties, just cable tie those on. One down there and one down there. And that'll give you your cavity between your top plate and the top of your filter. It's a much simpler solution, cheaper and a hell of a lot easier. So we may as well fill this up as it would be set up in the order that it would go in. If you're not bothered about watching this, just skip forward a few minutes to my final thoughts. But we've got one, two coarse pads, bumpy side down, medium pad, fine pad. Now I haven't washed this, so there's a little bit of sand dropping out the bottom of there. Ideally these would just be rinsed before use. We go one, two, three, and then we put our biogravel, biosensus, anoxic sort of filter in the middle, followed by another three. And they fit in pretty well, followed by another three. And more. And if you notice, I'm overlapping them just to encourage the water to go through all the media. And we'll get the other one in there. Finish it off with these lads and then we're done. Okay. Now these clips are exceptionally strong and they don't take any prisoners when you're getting them slackened off either, they really shoot up. That's it, that's a fantastic fit. You know, it, it, everything just fits together beautifully with this filter. Okay, so we've got a huge filter, made with the best materials, made very, very well. It holds a hell of a lot of media. It's got a monstrous pump that goes on the top with all sorts of features. And really compared to the, say, two top-end filters, which would be at the more expensive range of things, You've got the Oase Thermo 850 Biomaster and you've got the Eheim Pro 4 600 which is absolutely bloody awful. This represents much better value. Obviously it's not as compact but it holds twice the amount of media of either of those filters. Easily! And if you put the media in there loose or in one huge mesh bag you could get 12 to 13 kilos of media in there quite easily and that's what makes me laugh when I see you know that it's recommended for tanks up to 600 litres it could easily do double that if you just had one huge mesh bag of media in there 12 kilos that's a tank which is normally stocked about 1200 litres you know they've really lowballed the potential capacity for this filter even the way that it's set up now, it's got eight kilos of media in there very comfortably in easy to lift out mesh bags, which makes the cleaning a lot easier. You could easily get an extra couple of kilos in there if you didn't bother with that fine pad, which I don't think you'll need to be honest. 
that's like 10 kilos that makes it suitable for a normally stocked tank of a thousand liters or a heavily stocked tank of 500 liters even how it's set up now it's got eight kilos of media in there that's a heavily stocked tank of 400 liters or a normally stocked tank of 800 liters maybe it's even more especially with those mesh bags of the bio gravel in the core you've got two kilos there working really hard and that's operating in an exceptionally safe environment because you've got loads of water flowing over the outsides of the mesh bag anything that gets released that might be sulfurous or you know deemed as toxic in large amounts is just constantly getting released into the water in a totally safe environment the bio home and the bio gravel basically does the job of a miniaturized deep sand bed in a safe environment you're never gonna get a bubble of pollution building up and suddenly released like you can from a deep sand bed and that's what makes those bags of bio gravel so effective you know there's folks online using the cat litter and all that sort of thing which is great but if you want maximum efficiency the bio gravel just can't be beat you know if you crack it open Put it under a microscope, you can see that every piece, every part of every piece is accessible inside and out. That's a bloody efficient filter. And all that combined makes for one exceptionally efficient filter. You know, if this was available in UK shops, I think it would be a, a, an instant hit. So if there's anybody with a shop watching this, I would suggest contacting F zone and getting these systems in because you know you're getting a lot hell of a lot for your money not sure they would do trade accounts I don't know I think I've seen them for sale elsewhere but I don't know whether it's F zone who's doing all the selling I'm not sure but as I say if you're a shop get in touch with them I'll put the details in the video description along with any other useful information thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video